So here's an application of angular speed and linear speed. So let's take a look at this problem. To approximate the speed of the current of a river, a circular paddle wheel is with a radius of four feet that's lowered into the water. And the current causes the wheel to rotate at a speed of 10 RPMs. We want to find the speed of the current in the river. Now here's a visual that's happening with this. Okay, so as the river is flowing this way, it's pushing the paddle wheel and it's causing that to rotate. So this is the situation that we have on this problem. Now, we want to find the speed of the current. The speed of the current is right here, which means that at the very edge of the paddle wheel, whatever the speed of the paddle wheel is, that's also going to be the speed of the current as well. So what that's asking us to find is going to be linear speed. So the same speed on the outside of the wheel like that, that's going to match with the speed of the current. So ultimately, for this problem, we have to find linear speed. Now in order to find linear speed, we have to first find the angular speed. So let's do that first. Okay, now uh, the omega is equal to theta over t is the formula. It's however many angles you cover over a certain amount of time. Now for this, they don't give us an angle, but they do give us 10 RPMs. So let's start with that. We're going to do 10 revolutions per minute. So RPMs, revolutions per minute, that's what the time we can put on the bottom. Now typically when you do omega, omega is measured in radians. Okay, so we're going to change this to radians per minute. So in order to do that, we have to use a, a conversion on that that we're going to multiply this by. And the conversion that we talked about uh, earlier in this session is that you have one revolution is the same thing as two pi radians. I want the revolutions to cancel, so I've got to put revs in the bottom. I'm going to put radians in the top. So one revolution is the same thing as two pi radians. When I multiply across the top, across the bottom, the revolutions are going to cancel out, and we get 20 pi, and that's going to be radians per minute. Okay, so that's the first step, is to find the angular speed. Now we want to find the linear speed. Now the formula that we have for that is V equals R omega. So in this case, the omega, we already found that, that's 20 pi. Now the radius is going to be the radius of the water wheel, which is what they already gave us, and it's 4 feet. So for this one, we're going to do V equals 4 times 20 pi, and that's going to give us 80 pi. Now the units on that, the radians are pretty much a dimensionless unit. We have feet that are here uh, from the radius right there. So the units on this are going to be 80 feet per minute. Okay, so that is the linear speed. However, it's not how they want us to write our answer. It says that they want you to, what is the speed of the current in miles per hour they want here. So now I have to do another conversion to convert 80 pi feet per minute into miles per hour. So we're going to use a little dimensional analysis for that. So hopefully you have time to write all this down. If not, you can always pause it and rewind the video. But I'm going to go ahead and start off with the 80, 80 pi, so I have 80 pi feet per minute, and let's write it this way with the minutes on the bottom, like that. Now I have to do a couple conversions here. First of all, I need to change the feet into miles. Now I can do that by the conversion that they gave us right here. It says one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. Let's do that first. Okay, so I'm going to put I want the feet to cancel, so i got to put the feet down below here, and I want miles on top. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is one goes on top here, one mile, and then 5,280 feet goes down below there. So that way the feet are going to cancel, and so by doing that conversion, I've changed the problem now into, uh, I, have, I have the miles, but it's miles per minute. They want miles per 
hour. So I have to do another conversion to change the minutes into hours. So let's do that next. Okay, so I want, I, I know that there's uh, 60 minutes in one hour. So I want to put the minutes up here so it cancels with the minutes down below there. And I'm going to put hours down below. So 60 minutes is the same thing as one hour. So now that I have this, I'm going to multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. Now if I multiply across the top, we get 8 times 6, we get 4,800 pi. That's going to be divided by 5,200 in 80 feet. So this is the, what I want to put on my calculator. You should have a pi button on your calculator, so you can do 4,800, then hit times pi, and then divide it by 5,280 feet. Now when you're done with that, the answer that you get is going to be, if you round it, to, we're going to round to two decimal places here. Now it doesn't say that in the problem what to do, but uh, two decimal places gives you enough there. This is going to give you 2.86 miles per hour so not a not a surprising or or uh, surprising number we get it's not that it's pretty small uh, but for this particular river it would only be going at 2.86 miles per hour again this can actually be applied also to the speed of the wind and so uh, we have electronics that of course will calculate all this for us but all this would be the mathematics that goes behind uh, all the electronics and so that way it's good for us to know how all that is being calculated.